Hi, how are you? Um, this is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoe Space. Um, this is Shoe Talks, quarantine edition. We have today Jason from Harlick Skating Boots from San Francisco area joining us. Um, I'm gonna see if she is, not she, he is here. Oh, not yet. Um, actually, one of our former students told me about them. I didn't know about them until she told me. Um, she suggested that she would love to hear about them, what they do. Um, thank you, nice hat. Mr. Brant's craftsman, craftsman um, made it for me. Um, I've been wearing it. I have a big head, so it's kind of shallow, I feel like. If I pull it too much to make it feel comfortable, it's kind of going to mess up this cute little shape that he made. Thank you, Kenago. <laughs> um, okay, let's see if he is here. Uh, let me see if I can uh, send Harlick skating boots. Yes, he is here. Hi. Okay, waiting for Jason. Welcome back, Jason. Hey. Hi, Jason. How are you? How's it going? I'm gonna Good? finish this one hill real quick so Omar can keep going. And then sure, I would love to see you. Stop and talk. I love all your um, videos so that I'm you're just, posting. Uh, I'm measuring uh, the tip to back length, so uh -huh. I'm gonna hit the skater's blade. So oh, the, nice. This is a cool machine, actually. You can check it out. Oh. Uh, it's a big nailing machine. Uh huh. So, uh, it was actually uh, designed to be a pallet nailer. Oh. My great granddad had him at the shoemaking, the nailing post uh -huh. at the bottom. Uh huh. And uh, does a good job. Let me see. What does it do? Wow. Oh, wow. I'm up at the heel press. Woo. Can I make the nail a little bit longer? Uh huh. Wow. I gradually make the nail longer as it goes back. Wow. And it puts in one at a time? There we go. Wow, oh, very cool. Does it put it in one at a time? It's like a spool of wire that you just put, it just cuts and shoots it? It is, exactly. <laughs> so it's there's the like spool the down there. Can you see that? Wait, no, I can't see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the spool. Wow, okay. that's the spool. And then it runs up and through here. Uh huh. And uh, then down, down through there. Whoa! Wow! Okay. It's kind of like the auto. Oh, good. How? Well, let's let's get dive right in. So dive tell right us in. a little bit. Tell us a little bit about you um, and what you do. I absolutely admire that you. You said that you're actually like the last skating factory standing in the u.s that does it the way we do it where everything's uh made to order custom hand uh -huh. you know like a, a real custom everything else is mass produced these days yeah so uh yeah it just came in our fitting room this is like our, our fitting room uh-huh uh, so the skater would sit up in this chair uh-huh and uh I'd trace their feet and uh -huh. do uh, like foot impressions and stuff like that in here. Yeah, I saw that. So do a lot of the athletes have like issues with their feet? So do you need like some orthotics kind of put in? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so especially with the skating boot, it's not very forgiving at all. It's firm and hard. It, and yeah. So there's issues with pronation uh, and the, the navicular bone popping out and mm -hmm. getting pressure on that firm part of the boot. Yeah. Uh, the foot will kind of just subconsciously contract itself to Ooh. relieve that pressure right and then after 20 or 30 minutes of the foot doing that the it will get a burning or cramping pain uh. and so um yeah we build arch supports and uh. Uh, wedges uh -huh. and we also build a uh, custom blast uh-huh so something like that uh-huh to build out like through the arch or make it wider in the front right whatever the specific need might be uh-huh oh very cool Sorry, I just interrupted you with uh, the process. So you do, you measure their feet. And that was a wall of, what was that wall of the photos? Yeah, that's cool. My dad made these uh, photos that just kind of shows the hand made aspect of it. So you see, uh, let me get there. Like uh, the top 
right on the screen, I think, would be yeah. the, uh, my dad yeah. doing the designing. So he's creating a pattern. Uh huh. And then we're hand cutting based off uh -huh. of that pattern. Uh huh. Stitching the uppers. Yeah. Uh, building the custom last. Yeah. Going across the top there, doing the, yep, the hand lasted. So uh -huh. doing side lasting right there. Yep. Then uh, come back here and we're stitching the sole on. We use a McKay sole stitcher. Okay. Then we're, uh, we did, did the nailing, what I just showed you, and then a lot of balancing. I'll get into that, I guess, maybe when I go out in the shop. But yeah. we're, we're trimming the, sole, the heel there and then yeah. uh, finishing the sole because they need yeah. to be waterproofed. Oh, and, uh, okay. Then we're, you know, the... May I ask, the, may I ask how do you do, um, so you're waterproofing the leather? Yes. What? Wow. Yeah, so uh, the way I describe the boots, they're, they're like super shoes, you know? Yeah. They have to withstand uh, so many elements, probably more so than any other sport or activity on earth, you know? <laughs> and, and still look graceful and dance and do all these things the way they, they do it. Right. So the boot has to um, yeah, have all the ankle support built in. But to answer your question about the waterproofing, uh -huh. uh, yeah, they, so that's ice skating. The boots are basically sitting in water all day. Right. And uh, so they have to hold up to that. But a lot of people, they get glitter and things like this added uh -huh. to their sole finish. Uh-huh. And uh, so, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a tour if you want. Yeah. Yes, please. And uh, so, so the first step in the production would be to uh, do that fitting and the measurement process. Yeah. Where we do a sitting and standing tracing and see how the foot reacts when they put weight on it to kind of identify the pronation and other issues yeah and uh, get all the circumference measurements uh -huh. so that's how we were able to uh, build all the custom lasts and everything based off of those measurements uh, create the patterns based off of those measurements as well mm -hmm. so uh, then we'll get the pattern like i like you kind of saw in the photos over there or just right this. so this is the designing table i've got some stuff on here right but uh then we'll design them and we'll have a file for them. We've got all these guys are all waiting and everything. Wow. How many um, can I can I ask you what your wait list or wait time is? Yeah, we, we have like over 150 orders waiting right now. Wow. And so we're trying to get caught Catch up, in up. That and I'm looking at like probably at least five months. Wow. So it's a good back order. Yes. And and uh, you know, I kind it, of did it like that on purpose to be lean and mean to yeah. uh you know withstand worst case scenarios like what we're in right now right uh, in a way so, right now you can catch up yeah it's uh there's no catching up though <laughs> no. <laughs> no always busy yeah i see sorry so, i yeah, let's go on with the tour yeah, there's, a, to there's a request the way, and then we can go through some questions and things yeah uh, and there's a request to go a little slower on the camera <laughs> okay yeah. yeah so um this area, this is a butcher's block, and I treat this with a linseed oil. Uh-huh. And um, then this is my knife, you know, like your standard cutting yeah. knife. And then a smaller uh -huh. knife that I use for the more detailed things, like uh, yeah. an artistic design. There's a pattern for that. Yeah. Um, Do you have – oh, I'll ask you later about the design, if you have the reins to, like, design and kind of, like, your own, if somebody comes up with the designs. Yeah, so this is, these are the design patterns. Uh -huh. So it has their name, the size, uh, like she's going to get an artistic design. This one's actually going to be a patch. An embroider patch allows them to get more detail and things like uh -huh. that. So if anybody's uh -huh. watching that does some of the custom, maybe cowboy boots and things, sometimes you can sew a patch on there. Uh -huh. and, and still inlay it, like back, cut a silhouette out of what the uh -huh. patch would be, and then back it with suede, and yep. uh, then inlay it uh, on, into the suede. Work. Um, so this would be the lining pattern. And to give you an idea of some of the leathers, oh, geez, my, I kind of got a bunch of stuff here. But uh, this would be like the tan leather that you see a lot of pros and the coaches use. Yeah. Some of the, like a pebble calf. Uh-huh. Sorry, I just had all this up here. But uh, there's the I white. It's a, stiff, it's a four and a half one. ounce. Wow. Uh, elk leather is what we call it. Elk leather. And, okay. uh, so we get that in white, black, and tan. And uh -huh. then we do a bunch of specialty colors with suede. Yeah, and, I saw uh, we just yeah. posted something with all your purples and the pinks today. Oh, wow. Sorry. Omar's standing right now. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, isn't it? I realized without a headphone, it's hard to, yeah. 
here. He'll be doing his thing over there. But um, he'll be taking his lunch real soon. So maybe you can ask me a few questions before I go back in there. Oh, sure, sure. So um, let me look through the, some questions. Just to, So how long have you been making shoes for? So I started here in 1997. Uh huh. So the week after high school, after I graduated, my dad was, oh, it was like the next day he was like, all right, so you're ready to go to work. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> no <laughs> fooling around. And I was like, oh, man, I really want to go to Lake Powell <laughs> with my friends. Yeah. And he's like, oh, no, OK, one week. And so, uh, no. so you got a one week break and then off to work. Yeah. What did you so, do first? Uh, pulling tacks. Pulling and tacks? helping with the gluing and assembly. Okay. So Some you basic, basic stuff. You yeah. learned, you look, kind of learned each step as you went? Yeah. So I had to be trained on the assembly line from like six months to 18 months um, at each aspect. And so that was good to actually do that. And like now it's myself and one other guy and we do all the manufacturing. So uh, to be able to have that skill is, I mean, I can't be a, you know, it's claimed to be a boot maker and have a boot making company if I can't make the boots myself, right? So, right, I absolutely have to be able to do that. So, I'll go back, I guess, here to uh, and feel free to ask me questions or interrupt oh, yeah. that, uh, the camera again. And so, after we cut all the components out, there's multiple layers, there's also internal reinforcement layers. So, there's uh -huh. outer leather, uh huh, there's then uh, two layers of uh, thin cuff, which oh. is uh, kind of a firm split leather, okay. And then uh, sometimes they get an additional layer as well. So we're up to four layers of support of wow. leather and uh, sometimes a firm rubber or a heat moldable plastic wow. uh, if needed. And then we'll come over to the gluing table, right? You can kind of see the residue of some of the glue that I have here. Yeah. A little fan and my little glue pot. <laughs> okay. But then uh, we'll sew them. So we have, uh, I know you guys can appreciate this stuff. So here we have nice. the Singer Post Machine. Yes. Right? Yes. And uh, this is where I do all my backstays and my toes. Yeah. And uh, so we sew on there, and then we have the zigzag machine over here, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Zigzag where I join the backs and the toes is uh, for the linings, and the backs right. for the upper on the outer leather. Uh -huh. uh, this is the barrel machine. Uh huh. And so that's where we close the linings and the outers together on there. Wow. So yeah, these machines are super old too, but man, the old machines work the best. They do. Yeah. So uh, here we have the, the old hole punches, right? So like every single lace hole, yep. boom, is getting cut with that thing. Yeah. And then the... Uh, eyelets. Yeah, this the... is going to be for the hook setter. Oops. And then this is for the eyelets that so has the hot oh. the little... Uh-huh. Oh, it's there. already loaded. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yeah, uh -huh. so uh, we've got pedals. Yeah, we had like a, a pneumatic machine. And uh -huh. uh, that thing went out. It like would jump a space... Oh, I, on every other boot or something. And so I oh. couldn't afford to like hold on to that. Right. So <laughs> analog, manual. Yeah. I kind of like cool. it better, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then we have uh, our lasting station. Uh huh. We'll go right here. So we've got like your lasting pliers, uh -huh. your French tip hammer, uh -huh. uh, your tack puller there. Yeah. My knife. Yeah, so you do you last hand last everything yourself. You don't even have like a we, what's your call like we a, a bed laster to do the toes and the heels. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. What laster? The a bed laster. Okay. Uh, but before we do the bed laster, we do the side lasting. Yeah. So these are our side lasting hammer or pliers there. Okay. That's like what the jack looks like. Yeah. Uh, but this is a bed laster. I don't know. Maybe a lot of you guys haven't ever seen a machine like this. A lot of people have seen the hydraulic. Or hydraulic the ones, pneumatic, yeah. Uh, yeah. Machines that yeah. have like the the swipers and everything that come in, and it's all automated. Yeah. And we have like oh, solenoids so cool. and a lot of things breaking, <laughs> which <laughs> I don't want to deal with. So right. this is an awesome machine. This is probably ninety years old, and I use it on every single pair. Oh wow! Took that in. What was Wait, it, girls? This is amazing. Okay, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Okay, so that's for the heel. That's the heel, for the. Well, to, I'll, I'll, that's I'll for the toe. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't have any. Let's see what I got here. So what I have is, I'll, I'll see if I can put this in here. It already has the midsole on there. Okay. But, uh, this is a cool boot too. 
It's got like a little BMW inlay thing, a little yeah. bump cut back, uh -huh. some added support, some heavy duty washers. Uh -huh. Like I was saying, everything is overbuilt. Everything is <laughs> overbuilt. Okay. Uh, so, let's see if I can do this with one hand. Oh, no, no worries. I, I mean, I don't want you to mess it up, so you can just no, show no, I'm me. No, no, I'm not going to mess it up. But I want to kind of run through and show you guys. I'll get yeah. my fancy uh, tripod. You guys okay. need one? Use a <laughs> oh, roll of yeah. duct tape. Okay. Sounds you good. just stick it in there. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna turn the camera. There we go. Oh. Okay, so I gotta jump start it. Here we go. Wait, hold on, we can't see it, but hold on. Can you see there? Yes. Okay, so imagine the sole's not on there yet. Yeah. But it's the last will sit in there. The hole that's in the last will sit on that yep. pin that was in there. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, let me give you a better visual. I guess from here, you don't need to see everything right there. But just to see some of the it, even even just the positioning that's kind of cool to see what and then I, you can kind of see that the what's it called one of the machines going like this to kind of hold it yeah, so the, it, the swiping so imagine if it was just an upper it's going to yeah. pull in here but you do you pull it into place uh-huh and this backs up here you hear it click it ratchets into place you can raise it up you uh -huh. pull the, the heels in and then you kind of pop the top up here or pop the, the toe up that will uh -huh. raise it into place and then there's a foot pedal that i'm raising and this then will come in like this and you're working the pliers while you're pulling the toes and everything in because the skating boot leather is so thick and firm yeah we need something to assist uh with, with yeah pulling. yeah i was gonna ask because i thought maybe you do it all by hand that's why i was like how does your hand deal with all those layers too you know so then i pop okay. it out and uh, uh -huh. so then that would be like where the toes and the heels would be left. But, uh, right at this point now what i've done is i've um we've blasted them we've let it cure overnight and everything and then we're we've taken out all the tacks and the staples that we use for the lasting process yeah. and then we balance it so what i can do is come over here and show yeah. you i guess uh so we use the the jack master the sanding machine everybody's got one of these right yeah and so uh we would be sanding and balancing before the sole goes on uh -huh. to make sure that where the sole interfaces with the upper uh -huh. and kind of get all the wrinkles and the puckers and everything out uh, uh -huh. by sanding it smooth and the balance is critical at that point as well so it's it's what i refer to as the primary balance yeah and uh I have these blades and things that are right here ready to go to put on it before I even put the sole on. So I think in regular shoes and boots, the specifics of the exact angle and pitch and the way that, you know, you just kind of put the sole on, I think, and, and then you walk in it and it, it breaks in like a sole. No, we do, make, we do make it flat and, you know, we make sure it's flat and sanded correctly. Otherwise, you don't want a curve on the bottom. So there's still like... a balancing process there, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so then we have the heel height and things to uh, make sure that the heel is going to be the right height. Mm -hmm. And everything, again, is going to balance uh, level this way as well. Yeah. So uh, with an ice skating blade, everything mm -hmm. is uh, kind of exacerbated or, or kind of more noticeable. So if the skater is pronating or something like that, they're uh -huh. going to go to an inside edge quite a bit. Or if the sanding and balancing isn't done properly, it's going to put them to an improper edge. Wow. So, uh, yeah, this process, the balancing process is so important. Then, then I put the midsole on like this. Uh huh. And I, uh, I'll show you here. And I sand it. I sand it again and do another balancing. Hmm. be a really high hill so more like a dance hill dance skaters like a uh, this guy's gonna have a two and three eighths inch hill compared wow. to our normal uh skater would have a one and three quarter inch hill oh interesting 
I'm gonna what? do four quick things. Sure. <laughs> Sanded a little bit through the sink area. Uh huh. Just to give it a little shape. Shape. Uh huh. A little style through there. And the metal, all the blades. Do you also make the blades as well? Uh, we don't. Mm -hmm. So those are made mostly in like uh, Taiwan and and England. So Sheffield steel. Yeah. Uh, so here you can see now, what I'm doing is uh, I take the last out. So this last has yep. been modified, right? A lot of wow. build up through the arch area. Yep. A little yep. bit wider through the front, front some bunion yep. build up pieces. Yeah. And then, so you have your inner sole. Yep. And uh, now your midsole. Yep. And now I'm going to, I'll show you how we stitch this on here. So this is an awesome machine, too. Mm. Where are we at? This is the McKay sole stitcher. Yep. And uh, uh, is it the, can, can we see the machine? Ooh. Okay. So this is, is the it... McKay model, uh, USM. Uh, what is it? The I think it's yeah, U United Shoe Repairing Machine Company. Yeah, is it and, the lock uh, stitch McKay or is it yeah, right? Not yeah. the not the chain stitch McKay. It's a lock stitch McKay. Right. So it's just yeah. a thread on the bottom. Yeah. Uh, we use a coarse thread designed for that, and it runs up yeah. through there. Uh huh. And uh, I'm gonna flip my camera because it's easier here. Yeah. Okay. So I ran through when I first started working here. We ran through two of these. So quickly, uh, so yeah. quickly. And yeah. uh, the cams and lobes up top are what wear out. And oh. those are what determine the spacing yeah. with the needle. Yeah. And so the cams and lobes make this presser foot. Uh-huh. Uh, there it is. Right. Uh, push the boot along or push, push the sole right. along. And right. then what would happen if it doesn't push far enough, Yeah. Uh, then this, and you've got everything maxed out to try to make it, you know, how we always make it, try to make it work, right? Right. <laughs> uh, but this needle then will, will slide into the previous hole and yeah. bust the needles. And so yep. you're just running through needles, which aren't cheap yep. uh, on these machines. And so, yep. um, yeah, I threw those machines away, scrapped those things. And uh, then I got this out of the, the back room. This was like the one my great grandpa originally leased. Yeah. It's and, old, like, old one. Would, yeah. He would lease these things and pay uh -huh. them for months per pair. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then uh, he eventually purchased it. But I, what I had to do is I had a, fix the timing and the gearing i needed to create a spring uh -huh. you know and there's no manual for it to tell you like what's not working yeah but uh you, you go in and that's part Figured of it you know, i think most shoemakers have to work on their machines yeah mechanics are too expensive so yeah. you have to have that mentality that yeah. stick to itiveness right and keep yeah. going and going and going until you figure it out but, yeah that's uh, wonderful the tricky thing about this machine and uh -huh. i hope you guys can geek out on this a little bit i love it yeah because you see the gearing there yeah and yep. that has the main shaft yeah and that's pushing your needle down yeah and and the needle sheath and yep. so the spring is the keeping the needle sheath pressed into uh -huh. the leather to kind of cover the stitch so it doesn't fall off the hook as it's pushing uh -huh. it along uh-huh oh, and that's brilliant. Uh, so then the uh go back on that gearing and it comes yep. down here to this lower yep. intersection. And then yep. that comes here. And there's a set of gears underneath that casing. Yep. And then there's another set of gears at the base of the horn here. Right. And another set of gears underneath. That's why I keep putting tape here because, like, oil and stuff leaks. But there's uh, another set of gears at this elbow. Yeah. And then another gear, a whirl, that uh -huh. has the, a hole that the thread goes through. And then that uh -huh. whirls it around the needle. Yep. So yep. all of this gearing... It's yeah. timed. Uh, and yeah. Sometimes you get a gear tooth that is just one tooth is all it takes to throw off the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, Do you hear it as it happens? You're like, oh. Or well, sometimes the I whole mean, machine kind of rattles. Yeah. Oh, I it's, mean, it's it looks like you have it taped up and everything. You're like, it. You don't have to change it so much, and you don't have to touch it up so often. Well, at this point, yeah, that's part of doing the lean mean like. Uh, lower production is is kind of less wear and tear on my machines as well, and mm. at this point, that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. So then we'll, we'll let me show you how it's how this machine works. Beautiful. If anybody's interested, we'll flip that. Sure, it's beautiful. I mean, it's kind of like we used to have a chain stitch make, um, and it looked very similar, and it's fascinating. I love it. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll yeah. watch. We'll slide this the on. The pressure is on. Uh, pedal. 
the same pedal lifts, and then as you slide it over to the left, it engages the clutch. So I'm gonna click it on here. Let let the press the pressure down. Then I'm gonna lift up, and I swing the horn. Mm. And this has a high heel, so this is a really tricky one. I should have chose a better one to do a demonstration on. But internally, we built a, a thick wedge through the, uh -huh. the ball of the foot, ramping oh. upward to compensate for the higher heel. So okay. If you put the blade on there, it's not going to have a gap there right. uh, at the front part. Right. So, uh, I'll show you this in a second. But I got to... Hand uh, crank. Now go up this ramp. Yeah. Do this part by hand. Yeah. Because it's so thick. Right now, I'm probably going about going through uh, about three quarters of an inch. Yeah. Of all firm leather, all dead tan leather. Wow. Going down is not so bad. It's going up the ramp. Yes. No, I hear you. Because he's uh, a, a bigger guy and he's having a, a higher heel put on, more kind of torquing and separating forces are going to occur through the heel. So I'm going to do a strong double stitch at the heel area. Interesting. Uh, didn't quite pick up the way I wanted, so I'm going to do it again. I don't know if, the, if you guys saw everything moving, but. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it is a chain stitch, McKay. Okay, yep. yep. Chain stitch. Okay, chain, chain stitch. stitch. I yep. always got confused which one was which, right? <laughs> no, no, okay. no. That's great. That's great. So it goes all the way through the inner sole now. Yep, yep. And the leather that's wrapping underneath. Yep. And the midsole. So all of that's locked together now. Yeah. We don't do like a welt stitch or anything like that. The next step for this one specifically, we're going to lay some carbon fiber on oh. this so we get a little fancy right like ooh. right instead uh -huh. of a quarter inch thick heavy outer sole uh-huh we'll do two layers of a carbon fiber with an epoxy wow. yeah it's so, lighter i yeah, guess a, a lot lighter and stronger uh and things like that and then mm. from the side is it for every shoe or is this particularly for this upon request so okay. it's a 125 dollar option wow it, okay we should probably charge more for, for the extra time that goes into it. <laughs> yeah. But it is what it is. And then from the side, it still looks traditional. Yeah. Aside from like some of this fancy stuff this guy's added. But the boot mm. itself and the sole itself, it doesn't look like some carbon shell uh, speed boot or something like that. And right. nothing against that. I'm just saying for ice skating, it's very traditional. And for us, being an older company, we've had to kind of stay in that traditional uh, look. look and style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Okay, well, uh, we'll kind of get through this and show you the heels. Yes, please. So we have uh, solid heel faces, the uh -huh. stacked leather heels. Uh-huh. And uh, so they start off like this. Uh-huh. Yep. And um, then we nail them on with the big nailer, the one I was showing you earlier that I was yep. working on. Yep. And then what he's done, I think. I heard him standing something. There we go. So uh, you can see where he was standing and balancing and again, yep. making sure yep. that the blade will sit on there flush and flat. Yep. Um, even a 16th of an inch gap with the mounting plate and the firm leather heel or sole uh, will kind of create a bend or a torquing yep. of the blade, which causes a like a twist to the blade, which then yeah. messes up the edges. The, there's two edges on a blade and they have to run parallel and true to each other and if there's like a twisting or a bowing to the blade uh then the skater's not going to be able to skate straight right right and it's it could also lead to injuries I, yeah I or suppose. Just, yeah yeah um so then so do, do you ever have sometimes like customers come back saying this is happening to kind of fix it sometimes every day every yeah. day uh that's part of the service that's part of what's built into the pricing and right. that's definitely what sets us apart from everybody else 
Right. The, it's not just sold and that's it. It's you're like, okay, like right. to, you, you work with a client. Right. Yeah. This, you're just not getting a, a boot off the shelf. You're getting a lot of expertise and, and uh, like technical work being able to be done with the boots right. and, and, and keeping them alive too with, the repairing of the boots and right. replacing the soles and right. the tongues. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our, our old school uh, construction method is, mm -hmm. uh, is it was developed during the Great Depression when people did resole. So that's why we use the McKay sole stitcher yeah. and the outer sole is glued on because then as a repair boot, you just pull that outer sole off and yep. then replace the outer sole. Uh, kind of quick and easy, I think. Uh, right. But uh Kind of back to the heels. We'll after we do the balancing, we'll put a top lift on, put a nice uh -huh. clean row of nails with the smaller wire. This yep. again, this is the auto solar, the old yes. rocket machine. Yes. And it's awesome. It works. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it works great. These little guys can be some bogers sometimes. Yeah. But uh, we'll do on the the old Finnish master. Uh huh. Uh, oh. we'll do this has a slight crown to it, so when I'm shaking uh -huh. the heels, I'll use this one. Um, uh -huh. Again, the Finnish balance. So yep. there's, this is like the fourth and final Finer. balance yep. Uh, yep. before it, it goes to the sole finish. Uh, mm. at, so the bottom of the boot was this flat one. Yep. Uh, and then the heel breasting. Yep. So after I put the top lift on, I'm going to be just take my lip knife, trim the yep. uh, heel breast a little bit, and then go to mm -hmm. breasting paper, and mm. then do the namke on the entire bottom of the sole. Nice, nice. So, um, yeah, go ahead. One of the what uh viewers subatus bespoke sarah says do you use nails in the stacked heels what keeps the blade from pulling the heel apart that's a great question that really is we used to use the old montello heels and mm. they came with the center nail yeah and uh honestly it actually ended up getting in the way with the blade mounting screws yeah yeah and uh there was no need for it and there was an additional charge so i already put all you saw how many nails i put in there already so yeah, I already put how many? Two, four, six, eight, ten, like twelve nails in there. Yeah, going yeah. through all the way yeah. the sole, yeah, up into the hardened heel seat on the inner yeah. sole. So yeah. it's going all the way through. Um, and then, uh, so where were we? Yeah, so we don't use the the nails, uh, with the the heels with the nails in them. Right. Uh, so this and is where then, I do a lot of the waterproofing. Sorry, real quick. Mm -hmm. We kind of I'm gonna wrap it up real fast here. And sure, then we sure. put glitter and stuff like that in this chem sure. glaze. Uh -huh. And then we do the final, like, you know, the, the white polish. And we mm -hmm. do the black uh, buffing wheels and things like mm -hmm. that right through here, mm -hmm. the burnishing and the mm -hmm. buffing wheels. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't show you this, but this is a heat press. This is a cool old machine. Mm -hmm. And this is, so we use what we call plumper. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that. But no. it's like a fabric material that after I put all the reinforcement layers mm -hmm. on the upper, uh, oh, okay. then I back it with a fabric that's yeah. coated with a heat activated glue. Okay. So then uh, it kind of creates a membrane, membrane right. and a seal between the outer leather and the lining. And um, it also do gives you... the leather a nice even stretch. Right. During the Wait, do you, do you heat it and press it before you cut it or... <laughs> No, after no. I cut it and put after. all like these ankle reinforcements, yep, yeah, this is in. just some scrap leather. But let's just right. say this is my outer, and this, and I put a couple of build-up pieces in there, yep, yep. Uh, to reinforce the ankle support. Yeah, and then I would lay the fabric or the the plumper is what we call yep. it. Uh huh. Uh, it's it's this stuff right here. It's a fabric. Uh huh. And yep. then so I fold it. Fusible. Mm -hmm. To create like four layers in one, right? And stay Wow, four uh, layers. But that's a heat-activated glue. Yep. Yep. So then it goes in heat press and I just lay it on flat spin uh -huh. it and, and roll it under there. And, uh, wow. and then it gets spin to it about 300 on. degrees. Uh -huh. And then I press it down with my hand uh -huh. and I go around the edges on the machine and kind of make sure that it's, it's done real uh -huh. nice. Um, nice. It just helps with the overall quality and build and the uh -huh. body of the, right. the upper. Right. Uh, so this is the old hammer machine. I don't know if you guys use anything like this. No, uh, I don't. But it, what is it? When I sew the toe seams, mm -hmm. uh, we're joining them together and then we do a top stitch. So before mm -hmm. I do the top stitch to really flatten out the toe stitch, mm -hmm. uh, the, where I join it together when it's flat, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I kind of run it through this machine here. And that makes it so my top stitch can go on flatter and smooth. Oh, wow. Okay. 
All right. So. Wow. Very, very cool. What's your favorite tool equipment? that you have in there is it the one that you put the springs on the yeah that's like probably hay? my that's my love hate relationship one <laughs> do you name your machines no <laughs> no your buddies what's that you know your buddy you know like how sometimes you just sometimes i rub them real to... sweet and treat them right but y yeah no names <laughs> <laughs> no names <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so would you say your father was your mentor or would you say all the workers on the line, kind of every person gave you yeah, that's, every tip? That's a great question. I, I, I took something from every single person, even those later on that, like, I ended up not really liking. There's always something good you can find out of anybody and everybody that you work with. Mm -hmm. But uh, there were some special ones, of course, like my dad, that taught me a lot, but when I'm on this, when I was on the assembly line learning as like a young guy, I definitely one of my very favorite my she for sure was my very favorite this old gal, uh, mm -hmm. she's from Georgia, and mm -hmm. she was deaf, and she was a oh. sewer. Oh. And my great grandmother taught her how to sew. Oh. And she was just the neatest, like she was the general on that assembly line, and it starts kind of you know when the sewing that sets the tone sort of you get the cutting and you didn't yeah. sew in and things can really get bogged down and so on but she really kept things humming along but and so uh, she, she, she can't, taught me she can't hear but she can like see we had scratch so. paper everywhere and we would write to each other and she still like sends me emails and things on occasion wow. she was the neatest lady because like i say my great grandmother taught her how to sew and yeah. then she taught me how to sew so yeah. there was a direct lineage there and yeah. I, I really loved that aspect of it. And the way they found uh, her name was Jolene was uh, she went to the school for the deaf. Where uh -huh. she, and, and so my great, great grandfather who came here from Scotland, he was a shoemaker. And so when he moved to America, he taught shoemaking at a school uh -huh. for the deaf. Oh, and wow. so my great grandpa, you know, this guy's son, as at his company goes, well, I could probably find a good worker at the school for the deaf and train them like yeah. the way his dad did. Because the assembly line is actually a really good work uh, place for them to be able to uh, work, work Focus. And, and use their talents and skills. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she was that's... the neatest lady. So sorry well, to run on about her, but no, that's fascinating. Also, it kind of goes into ties into your how do you find workers? Like, how do you find the talent? How do you train yeah. them? Do you have to train everybody? Are there are there skilled workers around you? Sorry, are there skilled workers around you? Yeah, there, uh, there aren't. They're all <laughs> overqualified tech, techies here, you know, and right. everybody, everybody wants to make a ton of money. Well, they right. have to, to live right. around here. Right. And so, uh, you know, that is what it is. And that's another reason why we went to the lean and mean method, you know, right. because uh, people end up costing you more than anything. And then right. if their heart's not in it, they don't have a passion for it. Right. It's not like in their soul to be a boot. Right. And your part, uh, not partner, but your other, other right hand person. Yeah, Omar, say what's up. Oh. This is Omar. Omar, Omar's hey. been working with us for over 10 years. He oh, started wow, making shoes great. in Honduras when he was 12. Wow. But he's got, he knows all the little tricks and uh, yeah. he's made all the different types of shoes and things. Yeah. He's do been guys, specialized with us for a long time. Do, do, do you guys separate a little bit of work? Like you do a little bit of more of upper stitching and all this? And this we have, we kind of have our set routine that we've worked out with each other, you know, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> during the initial phases of when it became kind of just the two of us. And that started about a year ago now because uh, we had to change our space. So all this stuff I had to build out, all the wow. electrical, you can see all uh -huh. the conduits, yeah. everything I had to build out. Wow. Because uh, we... We had to leave our space that was twice the size, but it was going to be more than twice the amount in rent. Wow. And it was going to be around 10 grand a month. And so for me, it was just too expensive. So yeah. we kind of got, you know, we had to move, right? Yes. yes. So uh, just due to, you know how it goes. Anyways, everybody yeah. in, in this forum, if they've been in that position, they understand. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. But downside, you shop. know, yeah, it's great. It's so efficient, right? You have like a line. This is, a, you know that this is what you need. Yeah. Yeah. But he, great. Omar's great. We, we work together and, and it's nice to have somebody. Sorry, I always get dust everywhere. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it's great to have somebody that, you know, 
knows what your next move is going to be and you know their next move and you work together in that sense yeah so both of you each know how to make the skates from start all the way to the finish yeah there's Basically. some things that he's better at that i'm willing to admit or or you know and he thinks some things that i'm a little better at too and so that's where you that's where the working out the who does what uh, comes in yeah and if you have oh, to you good. have to but um, yeah and how many pairs a day do you kind of not a day how do you work so you kind yes. of set, Go ahead. schedule your week as like okay i'll do the patterning for a couple of pairs at a time and then you move on to the next stages after like one week say how how many pairs do you kind of work on it at a time uh let's see so my dad will do the designs and he'll mm -hmm. uh, send them to me and then mm -hmm. we have uh I'll do about 12 or so in a, in a batch mm -hmm. and uh then we'll we'll try to get it done. I'll try to get that done in a week. It's usually like eight or nine days. Yeah. So, uh, but that's not too bad considering yeah. for two guys to bust that out. So that's yeah. where the efficiency and the productivity really improved when we mm -hmm. went to smaller work uh, crew. Base. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of more like not, it's not a high, like high horsepower, you know, it's more efficient, right? It's like a, right. an electric car. Right. <laughs> And also, but we're strong like at less, the same time. yeah, less space. Also, like work walking around the machines. It's almost like you know, next step, next step. It's next to each other. Sometimes, yeah, do you when that? you have a bigger space, you have to walk over that way. You know, sometimes you lose time that way. Oh wow, yeah. So it works around. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, who else in your family works with you? Do do your family or children kind of think they'll? come and join you or I haven't really uh, done that yet if you know so I do have three boys that are a little bit older so like 18 19 and 20 and then two wow. little ones so they're one and five so I've got plenty of wow. time to but the uh, older boys I want them to really go to school for it like that's my goal probably as a dad and I just want them to try their best at whatever and I'm still a pretty young guy so I don't have to worry <laughs> about my succession plan quite right. quite yet but right. uh, if they show interest, I'm not going to like, you know, shun them or say, say right. they, they, you don't want to do this. It, it's just, it's, it's a labor of love and a lot of sacrifice yeah. goes into it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, especially no, living understand. somewhere like the Bay Area, like we live on, on the peninsula, like just south of San Francisco. And it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So I bet. like the average home price is over a million dollars, right? Like oh, over, my. so probably closer to two million. Oh and, my God. And uh -huh. so that's the average. And uh, right. so for my kids, if they want to stay around here, they'll probably have to do something more than make ice skates. <laughs> well, you never know, you yeah. know? Yeah, and, but and, then. And, and if they do, I'm, I'm here for them. Have, have any of them kind of joined you as like, um, you know, have they come to the shop and like watched you a little bit like during like school breaks or whatnot? Um, yeah, or... the kids have spent a ton of time at the factory. The so they older have, boys, yeah. uh, before school, they would come to work with me at like six something. You know, I'd feed them breakfast and, mm -hmm. and they were at the shop every single morning. And then uh, I'd pick them up. And after school, they would come and be at the shop every single day. And oh, then the, the yeah. little guys, because we took like a 13 year break. Right. So then I had uh, uh, we had kids in like eighth grade and in high school and stuff. And then we had a newborn and it was like. <laughs> It's a little different like you know the wife has to go to work stuff like that and uh so i actually brought the little baby to work with me and it was <laughs> a lot of help from my mom and kind of my our family but uh really he was my little buddy you know yeah like, that's and me. <laughs> great did he have like earmuffs on or At like times, you know? I, put, I, I i i honestly had done that uh, but he was right there watching with me from from three months to two and a half years Oh, that's and great. So that was a priceless experience, to tell you yeah. the truth, uh, especially yeah. my second time around, realizing uh -huh. how fast it goes uh, oh, yeah. to have that little guy. But then with the, with the one-year-old, I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> we figured out other arrangements. And uh, so yeah. it's too hard, especially things have changed now, too. Yeah. And also around the machines, like, yeah, you know, you have to really keep an eye out on them. Yeah. It was so cool, though, when the little guy was here, like, that's what he was around every day, this super productive environment. But he was doing kid stuff, being creative. And his toys were like old tools and old like broken parts from machines. And that's, that's him great. like still. So oh, uh, that's great. that might be my little, that might be my predecessor. <laughs> yeah, possible, possible. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, 
Do you ever wear your own skates? Uh, when I was a kid, I had I yeah. didn't make them. My dad made them for me. So we right. did like the roller skating and stuff right. like that. Would you ever do it for your family? Would you make one? Now that your feet aren't growing, maybe. Yeah, at some point, maybe. They've been, everybody's so busy and like they do other sports. And yeah. so uh, we'll see. Yeah. I've made my wife a couple of pairs of boots. So. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Roller skates or or ice, ice, ice they were ice, ice skates yeah okay. but she wants roller skates now roller skating if you guys haven't noticed is really uh, getting a little more popular i love it yeah 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 i want to get better at it <laughs> hence that's why i broke my uh, wrist doing uh, roller skates when i was pregnant last year oh um, so you you got into the roller skate scene then a little bit no not really i was just going with my son my son and the kids wanted to go and i'm like i'm not just gonna watch and sit and wait for three hours so i i got my skates on and <laughs> yeah that's yeah, awesome anyway, anyway um so your patterning is it do you have a standard and then work off of it or do you kind of have a couple styles do you it's not you don't have to do it completely from scratch right so we have um, our traditional style and, mm -hmm. and look uh, mm -hmm. and it hasn't changed much and that's right. kind of by design as well. Throughout the years, right. it's like, right. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. And uh, so this oh, is that's from your, 1969, oh, that's right? Wow. And if you look at the pattern, uh -huh. it goes up a lot higher, right? Yeah, it does. And yeah. those designs are for quilting on the lining. Initially, uh -huh. to get ankle support, they did quilting uh -huh. before right. they moved to like all the layers, like what I was showing you there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this oh, one's like so slamming. So my great granddad, he was into making cool stuff like that. Uh huh. Um, oh, that's great. But like, yeah, through the years, the boot definitely evolved. And yeah, uh, look, they even made roller skates for chimpanzees. <laughs> cool, huh? That's so funny, fun. Yeah, who's the, who's the favorite skates you've made for who? Like, uh, yeah, like like Will Ferrell and John Heater for Blades of Glory. We made oh, their boots. So that was wow. like a fun one. Uh, we made yeah. them for some of the celebrities, like yeah. Michelle Trachtenberg, the girl that did Ice Princess. Mm -hmm. uh, you, that was the old, an old movie. Uh, and then Arlick the Rock. Museum. Yeah, North Sea You know, sea like The Dragons. Rock, uh, D Dwayne Johnson, we made him some ice skates for the Tooth Fairy movie. Oh, wow. And, what uh, size is he? He's like over a size 15. It was, a, wow. it was like our biggest last. And then yeah. we had to build it out like even more. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's amazing. Um, that's like a museum in there. That's beautiful. Yeah, so I guess kind of to focus on what you're saying with the patterns and the design, what we had to do, I remember my great grandma telling me too about how they, they were the ones that lowered the boot height. Uh, so like everybody knows the shape of an ice skate these days. And like if you think of the old boots, like classic boots, they were up the calf. Yep. And she described how the lacing would pop off when they would yeah. be skating and stuff. And they also were starting to get to the point where they wanted lower, stiffer, but still a little more flexible. Mm -hmm. they were, the sport was evolving. And so yeah. the, the footwear was evolving with it to an extent, right? And, That's uh, interesting, yeah. And sometimes, sometimes advancing the sport as well. So they yeah. went from doing like single jumps to doubles and triples, and now they're doing yeah. quads and things like that. Yes, yes. Um, so, wow. but we still have always done the two sides like the center toe seam and the back yep. stay, right yep. and we've stuck with that and it's worked yep. well the only thing we've done is cut it down lower yeah um, and then we've done things where we do special linings where uh like for dance skaters you kind of see how it's cut oops uh lower in the back but then we have yep. that lining that folds over so that gives them yeah. more toe pointing mm. and uh they add things like this little flex notch yes mm -hmm. uh, so there's some design features that help mm -hmm. uh, with the, the, with the sport. performance. Yeah, yeah that's the, the performance. performance. Oh, wow. But so, yeah, you were, you yeah, were we saying that some... extreme any direction, though. You know, we've stayed right. true to our, our style and design. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. You said that you made some for um, Olympics, the USA team, you were saying? That's, yeah. So, that is great. Uh, yeah. Like Brian Boitano and Christy Yamaguchi. Um, mm. Let's see, I'll run. I got some of the last that I've saved throughout the years. Uh -huh. So maybe you guys know Yuka uh -huh. Santa, Maya Shibutani, uh -huh. uh, Madison Chalk. Yeah. 
She's awesome wow. right now. She's really doing. Tara Lipinski, uh, Peggy wow. Fleming, Paulina Edmonds, uh, Katarina Vitt. So th these are custom lasts that you keep for them, and then yes. that way and, when and they come they back. It, and it's kind of historic too. And but if if they need a pair, like nothing has changed. So right. we've got all their last buildups, everything ready to go, wow. specific wow. for those like star skaters, right? But everybody wow. else, what we do is we create symbols on the uh -huh. tracing that uh -huh. represent a specific buildup piece, and so we're able right. to replicate the shape over and over again without Every, having to over and save over. the last. We're able to That's build them great. up and then break them down, right? And then reuse the pieces and reuse right. the, the last. Wow! All right, great! Wow! Where do you see yourself or in the shoe industry that you're in, like in three or five years? Do you think you'll be doing same yeah. amount, more? I think, yeah, what would be awesome is if I hired a couple of guys in three to four years and I, instead of doing on average, like a little bit under two pairs a day, I was doing three or four pairs a day. That would be awesome. And if the sales <laughs> could keep up with that. Yeah. So if I could reduce my uh, back order to closer to more like three months, that would be better. <laughs> And mm -hmm. if the orders supported that, then uh, yeah. that would be great to hire a couple guys and increase production. And doubling production is not too hard when you're kind of at the, the low, lower range, right? So to double two pairs is four pairs. So it's still yeah. relatively uh, low volume. Mm -hmm. And we could still continue to focus on the, all the custom aspects of it. Because what, when you do that, like we were talking about earlier, you do get the customers that call in. Oh, this, yeah. and I'm telling you guys, it, it has to, everything has to work so perfect yeah. uh, as far as the function side. They're beautiful yeah. and everything, but yeah. if they, if they break down, if the ankles crease too soon, yeah. uh, if, if their foot hurts, cause they have to yeah. fit like a glove. Yeah. Uh, if you look at some of the padding that we add in here, uh, yeah. there's a last in there right now, but yeah. here we go. We add a lot of padding through the ankle area because of the stiff ankles. Yes. And then you see how it kind of contours through there and it gets narrower and comes together yeah. where the Achilles tendon is. Yeah. Uh, that's going to keep the heel locked in place. Right. And uh, so we want it to fit like a glove. It can't be too tight, but man, no. if, if there's any movement, uh, they're yeah. not going to feel confident because the heel will slip. And then when they take yeah. off on their jumps, they don't yeah. know. They, their feeling is they don't know where their heel is going to land because they right. don't feel the boot. Uh, yeah. And you also lose your edge work and it's yeah great blisters and things like that so right to, yeah it just has to fit perfect like I can't right describe it any better yeah so every you know so for the um you know how like sometimes for example like ballet dancers so they would practice on all the shoes but then like for the real not the real like the for the oops, sorry. performance Ooh, sorry for the performance um they needed they need to make it look clean and new so they might have like a new shoe and they'll have like blisters later sometimes for yeah, you do you have to have the um skaters kind of do wear tests and practice a little bit to see and make sure that they're like at the exact i think they get so attached to their pair of boots mm -hmm. that it would hinder their performance if they practice in one pair and then went to Change. like a show pair yeah or right. like, like a competition pair right uh, so, it's so they get so attached to the feel it's i mean right. imagine what these guys are doing right yeah you have to have so much faith and confidence it, like basically you have to not be thinking about any boot issues yeah uh, it's so that's your, mental that's, like, that's your your job right there right right and, and if they're thinking about the boot then they're they just don't have the confidence but they're going at yeah. they're going so fast yeah and then they throw that toe pick into the ice and they propel yeah. themselves. Yeah. You know, and then you have to land. And then, and then they, they're spinning and then they have to land. So there's all that torquing and twisting and the yeah. balance issues and uh, everything kind of coming into play. And then yeah. even uh, the flexibility features absorb the impact. So if you can point your toe ever so slightly into the ice a little uh -huh. bit more, that gives you that millisecond more of impact distribution yeah and the g-forces in the heel so yeah. with the full impact and the g-forces in the heel they're uh in the range of like 23 g's yeah. so joggers are more like in the teens and yeah. so these guys are practicing and and they and joggers get uh, like knee you know joint pain knee. and injuries yeah. and things like that all the time yeah 
because of the repetitive uh, uh, G-force yeah, impacts aspects. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But these guys are doing so much more and it compounds and becomes more difficult to create those G-forces. Yeah. And, it, and, and, and it's, it's insane what they're doing actually. Uh, yeah. But the boot uh, is there to help prevent injury, to yeah. uh, uh, give them the ability and the confidence to, to even do wonderful. those jumps. So I feel like it, it is like a relationship with the uh, clients, you and the maker, the maker yourself and the yeah. clients. Yeah. It's, it's real relationship. It really is. It and really trust. is. That's yeah. why uh, people have bought like as other shoe company or boot companies have gone out of business, uh, mm -hmm. shoe companies and people, investors have bought them and then they go to try to run them and operate them and they realize, uh, holy crap, what did I just get myself into? And they, uh, they can't deal with that customer service aspect of it or the right. small details that right. you go over on the order when, and, and one skater on Friday called me uh, the, the foot whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I, I'm, I'm the boot shaman or shaman, you know, it's like, I, I have to have sit up in that chair and I'm just trying to take it all in yeah. and, and then design this perfect boot for them, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. you have to, and then you have to stand behind it and it has to yeah. be like I was saying. But there, yeah. there's a lot of little tricks to the trade for yeah. all these little issues. And that's yeah. where being for a generation, I think helps because it was yeah. something that my dad taught me, that his yeah. dad taught him, that my great yeah. And over the, year, over the years, everybody picks up a little bit more. You lose a little bit probably, but the good stuff kind of remains. Yeah. And, uh, and it goes, it, yeah, it goes a long ways. But a lot of times you're just in there with the customers. Sometimes you have the impossible ones. <laughs> right. And uh, Thank you. Thank you so, 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 so much for um, sharing your time and the space and your story um, with us. And one last one. Do you take apprentices in your space? Yeah. Or do you, you don't, you don't need any, or interns, you call it. Yeah. Or, or apprenticeship or, you know, if I was joking, that was the first thing I told you how huh? you could see, uh, <laughs> I was like, Hey, you can internship here. But, uh, you know, we've never had one. It's always been like, um, kind of entry level job guys that come in. Right. And these days, they're uh, so difficult to find talent. Uh, but uh, I would love, I, I joke around on my Instagram now where I say, yeah, we have a three-year unpaid internship or, or apprenticeship. If, if you're interested, let me know. And Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if someone can live in your garage or something like this. Yeah, or if you have like a rich aunt and uncle that lives <laughs> in the Bay yeah, Area maybe. somewhere. Maybe you can just live with them. That's the right. only drawback is the cost of living. And, and yes, uh, I yeah. understand that. Would and you wouldn't want to move out anywhere else. It seems like like I, I would, but I wouldn't. There's no. you know how it goes, right? Yes, I know. A shoe philosopher. Okay, actually, as as a I, former I, I, I know. If, don't don't feel rushed if you need to. But whatever, whatever questions you have, feel free. <laughs> oh, I think I I kind of asked all the questions. Of, it seems like the f favorite leather to work with and stuff. You you have it's more like function. Do you actually have custom leathers? Some, would somebody bring you custom leathers? I'm working actually, with one gal right now. She wants like some rainbow print, uh, snake print. And okay. we're looking everywhere for it. If anybody knows of some, send huh. me a message. But, uh, rainbow here, snake print. Yeah, so she wants to do that. She's going to oh. do uh, roller skating. Uh-huh. But this yeah, is a really cool leather. This is a black pebble calf. Uh-huh. Uh, we did red bottoms on this Ooh, one. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, that's it's very nice. Cool. And, uh, but the pebble cap makes a nice leather. Yeah. Uh, this is suede, right? Suede oh, it's also nice. nice, yeah. Um, and then this is your traditional elk. Very beautiful. Uh, the, I love that lilac suede that you had on your photos too. With the, uh, the bat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can kind of see We've got uh -huh. some like, fun colors, colors yeah. and things. Yeah. Uh, your yeah. different shades of pink. Those are that's big for like the girls and ice skaters and yeah. roller do, skaters and stuff. Do clients only have to come? Actually, I only have thirty seconds because Instagram only lets you okay. do one hour. But um, do clients come to you to visit you, or do they just do online phone conversations as well? I love for them to be able to come see me, but uh, we okay. do a lot through mail order as well with the as tracings. Well. That comes got it so, got it yeah. you know what 10 seconds left so i have to go i'll let okay. you go and thank you so much for taking the time in your busy day all right kiko nice chat with you good to chat with you good luck Bye. Thank beautiful you. work looking forward to seeing you